Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, today's sermon is going to be called The Lie of Autonomy. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I bless you for what you've done and what you're about to do and what you're about to speak. Father, just drench us in your love today. Pour out your spirit like never before. Make each word that I say an oracle from heaven, Lord, speak to me, speak through me, to nations today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I was thinking this week about the lie of autonomy. Actually, this came from me watching a couple things. I was watching something on Netflix, and I was watching something on another, on another place, and I was thinking of how in society today, we just love um, autonomy, and so autonomy means, like, yourself, you depend on you, self-reliant. I don't need anybody, I don't need anything, and um, I just began to think about how damaging this is, like, <laughs> um, I went to see a Broadway, um, a play a few months ago, and the whole message was how especially women can stand on their own. And I was thinking of how, how two-edged sword this, this message is for women. Like, um, uh, okay, the message is you don't need a man, you can do it yourself, and you can do everything you can. You can open your own business, you can do all this. And what this comes from is way back, um, I think in uh, pre-World War One, the women stayed home and did, did nothing. But when the men went off to war now, the women had to step in and take their place. And the woman had to step in and take their place. And then when the women stepped in and took their place, um, they, they developed a whole new sense of belonging, a whole new sense of this is what it feels like to uh, work. This is what it feels like to vote. This is what it feels like to do, to do this thing and that thing. And ever since the end of World War I, women have been struggling to uh, be seen above men. And I think that's where the problem is. Um, the problem is that women's gifts haven't been celebrated. It was International Women's Day on, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday. It's just so amazing to see these women uh, take, uh, take lead roles and go into their destiny. It's so amazing to see. And because women um, throughout society have been seen as less than, um, I think we 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 have um, we as women have had to fight for everything. And when you fight for things, it's hard to just. Um, back on someone else but truly each other 
um, like, we need, um, the ma the males because they offer something that we don't have. I, th I think that they offer, um, a strength, a shoulder, um, all they have gifts that we don't have and we have gifts that they don't have but because of the suppression of women throughout the years um it's just been a difficult thing whereas if we had celebrated women from the beginning if we had celebrated um uh, their accomplishments and what they could do and what they could bring to the table, we wouldn't have this problem. We'd be working together in our, in our giftings, in our individual talents. If women were able to um, just get ahead and seen as different, we're, we're the same, but we're different in, in our gifts, too. And I think because um, it celebrated, especially for women, to stand on their own, to do it themselves, to, to like just run their own lives. And I enjoy seeing that, but there's a problem there. Because I believe that God hasn't designed us to be autonomous. He's designed us to work together. He's designed us to live in our individual gifts. But because of suppression by society, now... We just feel that to do it alone is what we have to do. Um, we, we have to fight. And it's not only with women. It's with Black people as well. It's with First Nations people. It's with all kinds of communities uh, that have had to fight over the years to be seen and heard because when you suppress a person for long for years and years and when they go buck wild no when you suppress a, a person for for long and then you release them they can go Buck Wyatt, and I believe that's what what has happened. We've gotten to the point where where women where women now say I don't need anybody, and people say I don't need anybody, and the, there you have women that buy their own houses, do their own things, and whatever and that's great i'm all for that you go girl and do what do what god has called you to do but at the same time there is i think there is a cry out there um for, for men that now that women are doing all this why do they need us for and i think um, I think now that we need to find a way that we can work together, that she doesn't have to dim her light for you to shine, fellas. I'll just say that again. She does not have to dim her light for you to shine. And in turn, you don't have to dim your light for her to shine. You guys could can shine together because you can take your gifts and she can take her gifts and merge them together and create this new 
wonderful reality. And I think, I think that's what the Lord wants. The Lord doesn't want men and women to be fighting against each other. He wants men and women in their perspective giftings to work with each other, to celebrate each other. Um, he doesn't want men to suppress women to say, you could go here and no more. He wants women to rise up like lionesses and, and take their place and roar. And he also wants the lions to roar right beside them. Um, because when, when it says, um, in, I think it's, um, Corinthians, Christ is the head of the men, man, the, man, the head of women, and the, and, um, women, submit, uh, women are the head of children. It doesn't, it's not to suppress women, it's to provide order. When it says head of, I believe, this is just my opinion, that it means serve. So the man is to serve God. And um, the man is to also serve his wife. And the wife is to serve the children. It's about divine order. It's about service. And, it, and it's talking more, it's not talking so much about physical service. It's talking about spiritual, emotional um, service. It's not talking about, um, physical service. So, any physical task a man or a woman can do. So, any man can wash the dishes. Any man can change a baby's diaper. Like, those are tasks that anyone can do. But, Headship is more about uh, physical, emotional stability. And if a man takes headship as a way to lord over a woman, women saying, you, you've got to, you've got to get me my tea while I sit down and, you know, no, no, that's not real headship. Those are tasks that anyone could do. Like, that doesn't say that you're the head of your home oh, if you get your wife to wait on you. No, no, no. It's more about um, mental and emotional head headship. And headship is supposed to be done with grace and care. When you look at headship, you are supposed to look at the way God does things. God never lords, he lords over his kingdom, but he lords with a purpose and he lords with love and everything he did even in the Old Testament, as hard as it is to believe, was because he loved his children. He never did anything without a reason. He never did anything out of spite. So if you're saying that I'm the man, I'm the head of the household, the Lord, ne Jesus never need to say, I I am Jesus or whatever. He just did it with his loving actions. And I believe that's what men 
uh, need to do. They need to be a picture of God in their household. And I'm not saying that men are God. I'm saying that they need to be a picture of God. Um, and to be a picture of God, you need to develop the characteristics of God. Not, not just, I'm a man, you should to listen to me. That is not headship. Um, headship is to lovingly lead your home, to lovingly instruct your children, give them guidance, to lovingly love your wife and support her. That's what true headship is. Um, and I think that's what homes are missing today. They're missing headship. They've got a lot of tyrannical uh, idiots just going around saying, I'm the man, you to serve me and whatever. No. Headship means you are to serve her. You are to serve your children. And she comes along as a helpmeet to help you in that. So the two of you um, lovingly guide and instruct your family in the ways of the Lord. I think that Headship has been so misunderstood. So, what headship is, is not to lord over the woman, is not to suppress women, but it is to lovingly guide and lovingly support the woman. And then together, you lovingly guide and instruct and support your children. You don't treat a woman like she's a second-class citizen because she is not, she wasn't designed to be your, to be your plaything or your play toy or, or your, um, to please you or to, you know, to be there for you. She was designed biblically to be a help meet, to come alongside you and help you with your destiny. And you were designed to come alongside and support her. And together you you create this this wonderful thing to glorify God. Um, when people see your relationship or your marriage, they should see a picture of Christ in the church. They should see a man who lovingly guides and instructs his family and children, and not so much task-oriented uh, leadership. Like, a leadership um, doesn't always include, well, he pays the bills and he goes out to work and whatever. That's task oriented. So anyone can do that task. So if she's better with the money, let her handle it. If you guys want to handle it together, it's a task. You guys can handle it together. But what headship is, is more spiritual, emotional leadership. So a man can pay the bills and do whatever, but still not be the leader of his home, be too tired to actually instruct and lead his children. So the children are lost because no one's leading and no one's instructing them but they say they're taking their place as the man in the home. But they're not. They're just doing a task. And I think 
that when you just do a task, it's just a task, the task gets done, but what's really lacking is uh, a foundation that the children can see of strength, of just love, and of peace, and just harmony in the home. So I think that's why homes are in such disarray, because people are not seeing now harmony and love in the home. They're having a lot of uh, physical um, uh, pictures of leadership, but not spiritual, emotional pictures of leadership. And I think you have a lot of people that are lost because they've never seen headship in their home. They've either seen tyrannical headship or they've seen no headship in their home. And either way you go, the children end up lost and we need to um, bring back headship and we need to cancel out this autonomy lie that says we can do it all ourselves. Men need women, women need men, not only in a romantic relational sense, but we need each other in a business sense. Um, we need each other in several senses that I can't even mention here because we all have gifts and talents inherently that I believe are inherent to our genders that if we work together we can be awesome um, because I believe that not women are smarter than men or, or men are smarter than women. I just think that we have different gifts inherently as a, as a gender. Because I've seen women, um, women are very intuitive. We're not just emotional and stuff like that, but a woman can use her intuition and see all sides of a thing where men typically, typically now, just see straight ahead. Um, so a, a man will say, that color is gray on the wall, where a woman will say, well, it could be it could be gray or it could be uh, silver and she'll tell you how it is silver and how it is gray where a man will say it's gray but every gift from a woman or a man is needed we need each other not only in in the romantic sense but we need each other in in the business sense we need each other in the um financial sense we need each other in all these different senses the lord wants us to stop fighting each other and thinking we can do it alone and just understand that we need him and we need each other to to um to live and to survive and we we need to stop thinking that independence means that you can do it alone you can do it alone you can pay your own bills you can buy your own house you can do all of that but my question is now are we designed to do that you can do it, but was it God's design? I think God's design was more for interdependence, which means 
not codependence where we need on each other and we can't breathe, not independence where we stand totally alone, but interdependence where we work together to create something new and something beautiful. I think working together, not only as men and women, but as cultures and as uh, people and as different, um, different status in life, I think we will, we could do a lot more together than we can apart and let's cancel out this autonomy lie that we need to stand on our own to be successful, especially as women. We all need a shoulder to lean on and it's not weakness to admit that you need help or you need a, a shoulder to lean on. So many people are dying because of this autonomy lie that they need to do it themselves. And the Lord is saying, no, let me help you and let me bring people aside, beside you to help you, to come alongside you and put you, help put you where you need to be. Um, standing alone as an island doesn't make you better, it makes you just lonely and it makes you kind of tired and a lot of moms and a lot of different people are tired because they believe this autonomy lie that you have to do things by yourself to be successful. You have to be by yourself or you you have to be uh, to be successful or you have to be married to be successful. It is like this the being single or married doesn't define success. Being sin single or married is just a relationship status. And it's important, but not in that way. You can be single and successful. You can be married and successful, depending on what God's purpose is for your life. Or like, I need to get married to, you know, feel significance, or I need to be single to be significance. No, that's just a relationship status. Either single or married, people can feel significant, can be significant, can carve out their path in the world. And I, when I say autonomy, I don't mean always, uh, when I say uh, togetherness, I don't mean always um, a relational, relational status. I mean, friends, I mean, co-workers, I need, I mean, cousins, I mean, brothers, I mean, sisters. And yes, it could be husband and wife, but it doesn't have to be. We need each other. Things we can do together are greater than the things we can do apart. Because if you're one person, you just have one set of views, one set of opinions, but if you're two, you can put your, your ideas together with another person's ideas and create something wonderful. That is why I believe to create children, it takes a man and his wife, because you have your thing that you bring to the table, and I have my thing that I bring to the table, and it comes together to create something new and something beautiful and so, something that can spawn life. 
and something that will eventually grow and have its and germinate on itself and have its own ideas and own identity. So I believe that God has called us to come together like never before. And I believe that God is shaping us uh, to be something new and to come together like never before. And I thank you, Lord, for, for um, being and doing the things that you do. And I thank you, Lord, for being God. I don't thank you for anything today but being God. Everything, everything after that and everything you do comes second. But I thank you for just being God. You don't have to do another thing for me. But I just thank you today for being God. And I thank you for, for, giving, for giving us different gifts as men and women and different gifts culturally and different gifts. Um, just different gifts. I thank you for the difference. And I pray that around the world today, different cultures and men and women and different people are coming together to create something beautiful. Thank you, Lord, for reaching nations. Thank you, Lord, for speaking life into dead situations. I declare right now, Lord, that you are speaking life, life into dead situations. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Take care.